Our social insurance numbers tell our government systems the most appropriate socioeconomic benefits that are best suited to our individual needs. Similarly, our genetic information, or as I would like to call it, our genetic insurance numbers tells our healthcare providers the most appropriate treatments that are best suited to our individual genetic makeup. These genetic insurance numbers are so important that the United States Food and Drug Administration maintains a public database of drugs for different disease conditions with black box warning indicating patients who have specific genetic liabilities who should not be on those treatments to ad avoid adverse drug effects. My name is Chupun Onsomwa Bufo, and I have worked in a multinational biopharmaceutical industry where I contributed to the successful development of transformational medicines for the treatment of COVID-19 and HIV. It was during this industry experience that I realized that drugs do not necessarily fail because they are ineffective, but that they can also fail when we administer them to the wrong patient population. So I thought to myself, what if we personalize treatment to patients based on their unique genetic makeup? With that question, I resigned from my job and started a PhD in pharmaceutical sciences at the Leslie Dan Faculty of Pharmacy, University of Toronto, to better understand how intrinsic factors affect how we respond to medicines. Most importantly, we do know that differences in how our genetic makeup impacts response to treatment does in fact exist. The reason why this is possible is because our current healthcare system is based on the one-size-fits-all treatment approach. If you have ever been prescribed a treatment by your doctor based on your genetic makeup, please put your hand up. Well, that is unfortunate, but it's also very much expected. And the reason for that, as I had mentioned before, is because the current landscape of our healthcare system is based on the one size fits all. And the problem with treating patient populations based on the one size fits all treatment approach is that when you treat them, some patients will respond to treatments, some other patients will not respond at all, meaning they will not get better, but they will also not feel worse and some other patients will end up with serious adverse drug effects. Take, for example, Dr. Anil Kapoor. Dr. Anil Kapoor is a well-known kidney transplant specialist here in Ontario. But just about two years ago, he was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. His prognosis was positive, and for that reason, doctors were very hopeful that with treatment, he could get to spend more time with his loved ones. And so they started him on treatment. But just after taking a single dose of an anti-cancer medicine that was supposed to help extend his life, Dr. Anil Kapoor passed away. For that clinical investigation uncovered that Dr. Anil Kapoor had a rare genetic variant that is known to cause toxicity for this particular anti-cancer medicine. But unfortunately, doctors did not test him for this genetic liability. And so after taking just a single dose of an anti-cancer medicine that was supposed to extend his life, Dr. Anil Kapoor passed away. This is a classical example of what happens when drugs that are prescribed to help extend the lives of patients end up taking their lives faster than the disease condition that they were supposed to cure. And while Dr. Anil Kapoor's story paints a very bad picture, global data also supports his experience. Take the United States, for example. Studies have shown that on an annual basis, adverse drug effect causes more than 100,000 fatalities with more than 1.3 million emergency department visits and over $136 billion in annual healthcare costs, making it the fourth leading cause of death in the United States. I know it's easy to think that this is just a United States problem, but hey, 
This problem is also prevalent in our very own dear country, Canada. Studies have shown that on an annual basis in Canada, adverse drug effect causes more than 10,000 fatalities, with over 2 million emergency department visits and over $13 billion in annual health care costs, ranking the fourth leading cause of death in Canada. Adverse drug effect is a serious problem, and we should take it as seriously as we would take heart attack, cancers, and stroke. But what can we do? Well, what if we stopped treating patients based on the one-size-fits-all, and actually started treating them based on their unique genetic makeup? Well, what that will entail is that when patients fall ill and come to our health centers, instead of immediately prescribing treatments to them, we test them to identify their genetic liabilities and then use that information to select the most appropriate treatment that is best suited to their individual genetic makeup. You see, when we do this, we do not only just save the lives of patients like Dr. Anil Kapoor, but we bring equity and diversity to our healthcare system. You see, with personalized treatment approach, Patients who would have responded well following the one-size-fits-all treatment approach will still respond well. But we also get to give an equal opportunity for patients like Dr. Anil Gabor, who would have not responded to treatments if they were treated based on the one-size-fits-all, but would have instead lost their lives. Personalized treatment can be applied to multiple disease conditions. And one of them that quickly comes to mind is depression, a disease that affects more than 200 million people all over the world. You see, the treatment of depression is commonly based on trial and error selection of antidepressants. And for that reason, clinical studies have gone further to show that more than 50% of patients with depression do not respond to the first antidepressant prescribed to them. And 72% of these patients do not achieve remission. Further studies even uncovered that 42% of this abnormal response to antidepressants are due to underlying genetic liabilities in these patients. So you can agree with me that we can significantly improve clinical outcomes for patients with depression by moving from the one-size-fits-all treatment approach to a more personalized treatment approach that takes their genetic makeup into consideration. In fact, clinical studies are beginning to support this postulation. A recent study that was conducted in the United States observed that when patients with depression we are prescribed antidepressants based on their unique genetic makeup, that there was a significant increase in their response rate to treatment and also their remission rate, compared to those patients who were prescribed antidepressants based on the one-size-fits-all treatment approach. A follow-on study that was conducted in Canada and reported in 2022 also reached similar conclusion. This is very exciting. In fact, the Canadian study went further to postulate that if only 50% of Canadians with depression were prescribed antidepressants based on their unique genetic makeup, we would save about $2.4 billion. Depression, 50% of patients, $2.4 billion. Yet, Genetic-guided antidepressant prescription is still not the standard of care in our global health system for patients with depression. And the reason for that is because for any change to be effective in our healthcare system, there has to be a synergistic agreement between our healthcare providers, our policymakers, and individuals, which are really all of us that are patients in the eyes of our healthcare system. But today, my focus is on what we as individuals and patients in the eyes of our healthcare system can do to ensure that the lives of patients like Dr. Anil Kapoor 
are not lost because treatments were not prescribed to them based on their genetic makeup. I am delighted to introduce you to the Learn Consent Advocate Model, a powerful model that will help us achieve our dreams of changing our healthcare system from the one-size-fits-all treatment approach to a more personalized treatment approach. You see, at the core of this model is our individual responsibility to recognize and understand that our genetic makeup impacts how we respond to treatments. And that certain drugs have black box warning indicating patients who should not be on those treatments due to genetic liabilities. Well, armed with this information, you can now walk into your consulting room with your healthcare team to identify the most appropriate treatment that is best suited to your genetic makeup. This might be relevant when you're starting a new treatment, when you have been on a particular treatment for a long time without seeing any clinical improvement, or even when you experience an unexpected adverse drug effect. You see, we know from experience that when patients are well informed about new treatment modalities, they are much more likely to consent. And when they see positive clinical outcomes, they will even go as far as advocating for the widespread adoption of that treatment modality across our global healthcare system. We know this from the breast cancer awareness movement. When Angelina Jolie publicly shared that she had undergone preventive mastectomy following a positive BRCA gene diagnosis. That news sparked a global movement. People started recognizing that breast cancer risk can be inherited and that early diagnosis of BRCA mutation can also save patients' lives. Armed with that information, they started discussing about genetic screening for BRCA gene with their healthcare providers and even went on to consent for those genetic testing. And when they saw positive outcomes, patients started advocating for health insurance coverage for this type of genetic testing, and even advocated for expanded genetic counseling services. This patient-led movement revolutionized the prevention and management of breast cancer as we now know it today. If we could do it for breast cancer, we can do it for depression. Well, the greatest challenge facing genetic guided treatments today is the lack of public funding for the necessary genetic testing that is required to select the most appropriate treatments for patients. But today, with this mountain of information, it is our collective responsibility to advocate and bargain with our policymakers to provide public funding for genetic testing that will help healthcare providers select the most appropriate treatments so that the lives of patients like Dr. Anil Kapoor are not lost because treatments were not prescribed to them according to their genetic makeup. You see, the future of healthcare is not one size fits all. The future of healthcare is one in which our individual genetic makeup is the core determinant of the type of care we receive. We hold the power to change the system. Because when we speak, healthcare listens. Thank you.